Welcome to the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. Welcome to the Prog Talks, an interview series by the Prog Space where we will be talking to musicians in all corners of the progressive music scene. Welcome back to another episode of the Prog Talks. I'm your host Dario and as always before we jump into today's topic and to welcome today's guest as always please don't forget to get us a cup of coffee or get yourself a nice cup for your coffee or tea. You can get it in our merch store. It looks super awesome. And we also have uh, cool t-shirts and, and other merch items. And if you uh, buy something, you support us directly to uh, and help us to continue. Um, yeah, bringing you the, the greatest prog that's coming out uh, and coming out soon is the new album from uh, Canadian band Sidemind. It's called The Descent, and I'm very happy to welcome Olivier, the violin player from Sidemind, to the Proc Talks today. Hi, Olivier. How are you doing? Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm great. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I, I, I already dropped, like for the people who don't know Sidemind or haven't heard about your band, uh, I, I dropped the, the, like, the specialty. Of course, you guys, uh, you have a violin and you play all instrumental progressive metal. Is that correct? <laughs> it is it is correct <laughs> I, I i can spot your violin just like right, right beside yeah, you. yeah <laughs> i always have it uh, around <laughs> <laughs> is it is it is it the, the 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 cool skull violin yeah it is the same that uh that is actually on the our um our artwork from the descent and uh, this one is a four string violin i always are um, also have a five string violin there back there <laughs> okay very cool um the descent is not the first side mind album is you 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 had a um had an album before all yeah. uh, right we released uh, erosion back in uh, 2017 and now it's our uh, second album yeah it's been a while since then what what have have you been up to i mean did you do you have the possibility to to play live uh, for the for the first album a little bit and and then um yeah yeah how yeah, was we, that we did play a, a a couple shows um in our uh, in our country we played montreal toronto uh, ottawa quebec um all uh, the biggest cities uh, around the uh, around our um, around montreal and then uh, you know covid the um, Covid kind of stopped everything, and uh, it, it was an opportunity for us to just um, delve back into uh, writing and uh, really refining our sound. I think uh, for our first album, Erosion, we were um, um, we were young actually. We were, I think, <laughs> uh, we were twenty twenty two or twenty three, and um, it was a. Uh, a very very cool project but we didn't have a clue how to produce an album how to uh, even record things so uh that's why back then we uh, we worked with um, a big metal producer in canada called chris donaldson i think he he uh, he's used to uh, to do the death metal and the really really big bands um and he helped us out a lot but then for that album the descent we really wanted to um uh work together and really self-produce our album and covid gave us the time to really uh, really work on that guitar sounds keyboard sounds everything uh, we we produced uh, ourselves yeah and i mean it was already like uh, i don't know two years after the the first album dropped um so so it was time anyway to 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 get to 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 do another one right <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, there was a bit of um, of the writing that was already already finished before COVID uh, uh, struck, mm -hmm. but um, uh, like I said, th there was nothing else to do during COVID, so we we <laughs> really refined everything else. I think the album would have uh, our second album would have released before before that but then we, we we kind of just decided to take the the longest time we could and learn everything we could so um 
I think in the end it's going to be uh, it's to, it's for the best. So yeah, you 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 took the time you needed to make it sound as as great as possible. Exactly. And and uh, yeah, I can I can give our listeners a little spoiler. It definitely sounds amazing. It sounds really great. You did Thank an you. amazing job there. Um, not only with the sound, with the production, but also with the, with the um, compositions, which is, uh, of course, a, a big part. Like it's always a big part in music, but but I think for instrumental bands in the in in metal or instrumental bands in general, it is um, very crucial to have like engaging um, compositions that. Um, mm. So people won't miss the vocals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's so true. It's uh, it's it's really um, you know, it, usually instrumental bands are doing EPs and not full length albums, and I think it's kind of to to give the uh, give the listener um, smaller, but um, maybe it's it's still it's still full but i think eps are um, are just the perfect length for instrumental music usually but we're kind of a full length album band and we like to uh, to release big uh, big re big releases so um so yeah it's our job to make uh, the album as good as possible for an hour an hour long and not bore our listeners <laughs> I'm I'm I I was uh, not not a single moment I was bored when listening to the descent and I'm 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 really uh, looking forward uh, to for people to hear it when it comes out on on November fourth right um, yeah two weeks away yes and um, you already released two singles from that the second single we were happy to present here at the prog space it yeah, was called breach you. and uh this the video for it you 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 did it in your i think in your yeah jam rehearsal room yeah. kind of um is that also where where you where you come together to compose or do you compose like like individual by yourselves and then like just um present it to the yeah. rest of the band how is the process going with the sideman uh, usually we uh, we kind of write like uh, the old way, like a uh, classical composer way. We're uh, we're on our own, uh, writing on the on the computer. Uh, sometimes sometimes we have uh, something in our head and we just record it on our phone and then work it out on the on the computer. But it's um, it's mainly uh, Kevin. Uh, Kevin is the guitarist. Kevin and me uh, writing all the um, the bass bass component of the songs and then we uh, kind of uh, suggest it to the to the uh, other members they they're saying oh that's that's really good and that sucks and you know we just <laughs> go go back to work and then we we take all the um, uh, all they say and we work it out and then usually uh, you know Kevin is uh, is in charge of their of the riffs and is charge of everything that's uh, low end and I'm more uh, the melodic uh, specialist, so we kind of um, we blend well together. Wonderful! And uh, the 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 first single was "Hoax," and that was that is a really cool song. And uh, just a funny backstory: when I was approached by um, your publicist uh, John Asher, uh, who's doing an amazing job putting out, especially Canadian bands, Canadian mm -hmm. metal bands. Um, he asked me if if we wanted to 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 premiere one of the two videos and and I listened to them like back to back and breach immediately grabbed me and 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 I thought hoax was cute and fun but I didn't really pay attention to the video and then uh of, of course it got picked up by by another media media outlet I I don't don't remember which one but but when when it came out then and and I and I watched it again I was like damn this is how could i could i have missed it like like i was uh um it's a really funny yeah. video you you were shooting in some kind of old church right and uh yeah it's actually it's a, it's a studio um that uh, it, it was a church back then but then it got uh, transformed into a into a studio room so um yeah, we, we 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 really had fun um, shooting that. It's um, it's a uh, like 
production value is a lot is a lot better on that uh, on that video. We made uh, actually we asked my brother. My brother is a um, is a director, so he uh, he, he um, freely gave his time to, to do uh, that project, and he had a lot of fun also editing. And you know, it's it's uh, he made a really good job just um, just capturing everything that. And the fun that we have playing together, I think that's what people um, really uh, remembers about the about that video. Yeah, absolutely, and um, uh, I'm sure this uh, this is a video that, that uh, is worth going back to and 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 watching a second time because there's so much going on, and you have like yeah. like uh, just the fun that you have that also transmits uh, actually through the music only. I think. Um, but uh, hoax in particular, I think, is a very, very interesting composition where you where you start out with this funny um, motive, with this funny theme, and then uh, like it gets turned around, and you you end up somewhere else, uh, yeah. melodically and harmonically. Um, and for me, like I grew up with classical music as well, and um, then of course discovering metal and prog and everything, and. Um, since uh, since I first uh, discovered, you know, there's a symphonic metal and all that, like metal that incorporates classical stuff and orchestral stuff. Um, with most of the normal mainstream symphonic metal bands, you know, I was always so disappointed with how they incorporate it because maybe the orchestra might sound good, but but then they have the like the the most boring riffs in, yeah you know and yeah. so it's always it, yeah. so exciting for me if if there's a metal or prog metal composition that that uh, actually knows how to how to transform the inventiveness and and and, and craziness of of or, or the opportunities that you have with classical music uh, or, or these kind of harmonies and melodies and and and, and rhythmic stuff that's also not mm. so usual for normal normal metal. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I totally get you. <laughs> it's um, it's uh, it's funny because well, uh, I also started at a well, I'm still a classical musician. You know, I played orchestras and uh, I always had uh, those two worlds uh, living inside me since I was young. I actually started listening to metal like to. Uh, Rhapsody and Nightwish and all those big bands with orchestral uh, stuff going on, and um, actually recently I I um, listened to um, uh, Jordan Rudess. He has a he has an album with an orchestra called I think it's Explorations, and uh, well that's a very good example of how to use a orchestra with more prog music, and I think it's uh, it's very rare. It's true. Um, what gives us also uh, the opportunity to, 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 do, to do that is we only have one violin and one piano, so it blends well with, uh, with the rest of the band. You know, if we had a whole uh, brass sections and whole uh, string section, then they would all have to learn what uh, like if 17, <laughs> 16 is and they would have to count it and it would like cost uh, so much so much money <laughs> so uh, the fact that we're uh, we're only one violin it's it's actually be better to uh, to um, to blend with the rest of the band yeah speaking of Jordan Rudess I think uh, my my colleague and good friend uh, Colin McAndrew who's also from Montreal actually he's mm. playing uh, with uh, with the band Ashbury and also yeah. is a big part of the prog space here um, I think he he um, he said about Sidemind that it's like a liquid tension experiment with violin. Would you would you subscribe to that? I, we get we get that a lot. It's true. <laughs> Every time I uh, I make um, I uh, I see somebody and we talk about our band, they always say, "Yeah, it's kind of like liquid tension experiment." They, we get also a lot of dream theater uh, influences. You know, it's they; <laughs> those guys <laughs> lived lived in our lives for like 10, 15 years. We we listened to Dream Theater and Liquid Tension Experiment so so many times in our in our youth. So uh, it's sure that there's some of their music that is uh, in ours. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, no, I, I forgot what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was just listening to you. Um, uh, where, where, where did I want to go next? Um, hmm. Ah, yes, 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 exactly. Um, I, I going back to hoax. There's this um kind of melodic bridge uh towards the end um, which totally reminded me of a, an amazing guitar player um whose whose albums are very diverse as well but but he's, he's got one song uh the, the guy's called jason cooey i think he's he's based in hong kong or something and okay. um the, the the song is from his 2020 album naka and uh it's called dance of awakening the spirit part two the ballad of the headless horseman it's like a 10 wow. minute song and, what and a name. <laughs> <laughs> that that is that is like a kind of a similar vibe i get there and it, it it is it was it was one of my favorite songs of 2020 um uh, so i'm happy to get to, to get some similar vibes and um i i also that 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 comes back to the point that i think the interesting stuff like m kind of blending classical music and and modern prog or metal or rock or whatever guitar music um i i do think it's you don't find it with the you know with the old stale symphonic metal bands you, you find mm -hmm. it with like those this fusion thing with 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 the young and upcoming artists and also a band like sidemind um yeah. Also, when 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 you when you mentioned uh, Jordan Rudess and this uh, symphonic album, um, I was reminded of um, Swedish, I think, or maybe maybe he's Finnish but playing mostly with with with, with Swedish bands. I'm not sure. Uh, there's a keyboard a keyboardist called Lalle Larsson. He's playing um, with the Swedish prog rock band uh, Karma Kanik as well, and he did a like like a like a symphony for band and orchestra some at some point like a long time ago already like 10 15 years ago i don't know um and you know a peter wildor from darkane and and uh and also i think the guitarist christopher monstrum that played uh there with with him which is like totally not the classical music you you usually find combined with with uh with with prog and metal um but more of the contemporary classical music <laughs> i have i have to uh to listen to that can you repeat the name i can send you the link later it's called uh, he's called okay. lale, lale larson okay amazing amazing stuff um, but going back to side mind, I mean, uh, th this this episode is supposed to 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 uh, be with you about, <laughs> about your band. Um, so yeah, uh, the descent is coming out uh, soon on November fourth, as we said, and uh, you guys have a album release gig coming up in Montreal as well. Is that right? We're playing on uh, November eighteenth in Montreal. Yeah, it's going to be the first time we uh, get back on stage. For for uh, maybe four years, I think. So we're pretty excited. Wow, that's amazing! And you're gonna play with 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 Carcius, right? Yeah, that's another prog band from uh, awesome. from Montreal. Uh, it's fun because um, the guitarist of Carcius, he's called Simon L'Espérance. He's actually the guy who mixed our album, yes. so he um, he knows uh, he knows our music very well, and uh, we know his music very well. So it was uh, <laughs> it's gonna be fun to share the stage with him. Yeah, actually, we had we had um, uh, uh, Sylvain. Yeah, the bass player and singer um, on the Proc Talks as well for their latest album, which was great. I think it was late last year, right? Yeah, they released their albums in March. Yeah, it was it was early. early it was this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so many, so many albums, so many, so many bands releasing <laughs> stuff. I'm, it's so hard to keep track, but it's <laughs> it, it's uh, it's absolutely amazing. Um, you're holding your your violin there. I I really I would I would love you to play just to play some 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 little snippet if if you don't mind uh, for the listeners. You have the bow somewhere. I don't have any bow near me, and <laughs> actually it's it's electric and I can't plug it. So oh, uh, damn. I'm I'm sorry. It doesn't. Uh... <laughs> 
it doesn't sound. It's not. Loud. It's not. Not even tuned. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn. That would have no been need, great. No need to tune in metal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Uh, yeah, but apart from this uh, release gig, is there any 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 more things in in the planning behind the scenes? Maybe that we can expect uh, from you soon. Uh, we'd like to. Uh, honestly, we're looking for uh, every opportunity to uh, to play live. Right now, there's nothing official, but um, we're uh, we would like to. To uh, tour the most uh, out of the this album before going back on in studio, you know, it's it's also fun to play those songs live, and uh, we didn't have any opportunity to, to play uh, the descent live. So um, the more you play them, the more you uh, you kind of feel the song, and the more they they grew they grew to you. So uh, we'd like actually to have the opportunity to uh, to play those songs uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, I, 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 I uh, don't have any idea how it is to tour in, in in Canada, as it's like a like a huge country compared to Germany. Yeah. Um, you know, and when you have your European tour, you can it's easy to do a tour with a nightliner because there's always like a bigger city reachable within the night's drive for the next day. But uh, but I can kind of guess that it, that it's not so easy in Canada with like maybe a thousand kilometers between places between big exactly. places that make sense to play <laughs> europe europe is really the the best spot for touring like you said canada is the um, you know there's a there are a couple of big cities around here but uh yeah like if you want to go to vancouver if you want to go to uh Winnipeg, Edmonton, Calgary, all all in the west of the of the country. It's you gotta go by plane, and you gotta go like if you don't go by plane, it's uh, like twelve hours, twenty hours. So it's a very very long drive. Apart from that, you know, we we could tour the U.S. That's a that's a thing that we would like to do in the, in the future. But um, it's uh, it costs a lot of money actually touring U.S. Uh, I think. For U.S. bands to come and play in Canada, it's it's free actually. There's no visas for uh, for that. And then for Canadian bands to go play in U.S., it's uh, really really um, costly. Yeah, yeah. I um, that reminds me that I that there's this a uh, lot this immigration lawyer uh, who helps out Proc Power USA with the with the immigration mm. visa. And uh, I I haven't seen any post from him uh, lately, but could be that it's the algorithm on Facebook, or maybe uh, maybe he doesn't post uh, anymore. But but he used to post like the like his paperwork like this for bands, and he's doing it for mm -hmm. free because he loves metal and he's he does, uh, he's doing it in his free time. But it's just ridiculous to 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 make the hurdle so big for bands coming in to play to their fans yeah. that want to see them. And and uh, yeah, anyway, that, that's yeah. I think that's that's a whole other topic. Uh, maybe closing closing this. Is there any band you could think? Doesn't matter if in the U.S. or Europe or Canada, you think would be a gr great match to play live with to maybe do a tour with. Oh my God! There's uh, there's so much of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I guess um, well. One of our favorite bands uh, lately is uh, Leprous from, uh, I think they're from Norway or Sweden. No way. Um, we have uh, one of our friends is uh, is Raphael, actually their cellist player. He's from yes. Canada, and we uh, we like to uh, we like to see him when they when they come um, <laughs> when they come play in Montreal. So uh, yeah, that would that would be a good fit. Um, apart from that, if if we're speaking about instrumental bands, we. Uh, we would say no if um, a guitarist like Pliny would ask us to uh, open for him. <laughs> um, you know, there's a big uh, instrumental band also, Intervals, in Toronto. Um, but you know, they're they're all guitar-driven <laughs> instrumental bands, and there's no, uh, I well, I I don't really know any any instrumental bands that that are not guitar-driven actually. Maybe I I lack culture and I should uh, I should find <laughs> I should find some more. <laughs> well, there, there's yeah. uh, there, 
melody wise it's 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 hard to find a, an instrumental band that that's not uh guitar driven but there's you know there's some post rock that like i think last last week there was an a release from a new zealand band called desbot and i think that's it's a trio with a bass synth and drums but it, but I mean, it's post rock. It's very ambient, very atmospheric, and it's not very melody driven mm. in the first place. Yeah. So it's like like a little bit of a different approach, and that's that's also um, always the the thing when I when I think about um, um, maybe you have seen our uh, Prox Space Awards that we did the last two years, and we we had some mm-hmm. like subgenre categories, and there was one category that is instrumental, and 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 then I thought it's so hard to compare a fusion instrumental album like Liquid Tension Experiment Three, mm-hmm. which uh, also won the public vote uh, last year, not surprisingly. Um, <laughs> to compare it to a great post metal album, which is like all built around atmosphere and 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 not like how many notes you can play in a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Actually, um, it's, it's it's funny because uh, uh, in Canada we have the um, it's called the Juno Awards and um, their uh, award, musical awards, and we we submitted the the descent our album for a. Uh, for this and we were wondering what would be the best category because there's a there's hard rock metal and then there's instrumental and uh you know we we could fit in both and uh i we i think we chose instrumental because um maybe there's just more variety in that that category instead of hard rock metal which is going to be uh, maybe more vocal driven bands and uh, maybe the jury is going to like better vocal so uh, yeah yeah and uh, um, and 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 also maybe you you're you're standing a little bit more out because i could also assume uh, or i could imagine that that there's m- maybe some jazz bands or whatever like, exactly but, but, but not that yeah. many violin driven prog metal bands yeah uh, in that exactly. category uh, on the other hand, you could also say there's not that many violin driven prog metal bands in the hard rock metal category. Also, but there's, yeah. but I mean, <laughs> there's at least the common den- denominator, which is metal. And, and, yeah. um, um, I don't know how it is with the, those big awards, you know, prog space award is, of course, small, but those big awards, I do think they all also have to take in, into account, like, if it's actually, reaching people and it, like yeah. if there's an audience for this kind of stuff um anyways there, uh there is <laughs> we, we, i think we, we could we could go on uh uh for a long time it's always so great to talk about music uh to talk with uh like-minded uh prog and classical music and metal nerds um here on the prog talks um thank you so much for joining us today olivier um, it was a it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I really hope you guys will be able to come to Europe uh, and play here as well. I think there's uh, a lot of people who would uh, really dig your stuff. And uh, you guys out there, you can listen to the album "The Descent" uh, from November fourth. You can probably already pre-order it on 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 Bandcamp or wherever. Just check the. Uh, the socials of Sidemind. You can find the links everywhere here and uh, in the description as always, you know the drill. And of course, uh, don't forget to give us a like and uh, subscribe or comment or get us a cup of coffee or get yourself a cup for your coffee in our merch store. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, This was a great episode. Um, See you on the next one. Until then, Take care of yourselves and your loved ones and keep spreading that prog love. The Prog Talks, produced by the Prog Space. Main host, Rune Belsvik Reynos. Produced by Rune Belsvik Reynos, Vanessa and Matthias Kirsch. All graphics and animations by Vanessa Kirsch. Intro theme by Giuseppe Negri. Outro theme by Zach Munoviz. 
This was the Prog Talks by the Prog Space. See you in a week.